Hello everybody, Sarah here from Sarah Hunt Pret Embroidery. Today we're going a bit Valentine's, we're going pink and I'm going to stitch a little embroidered heart. So I'm going to show you how to stitch the heart and then I'm going to show you some things that you can do with your embroidery, things that you can turn your embroidery into. I've got a free PDF as well for you with these little heart templates on. There's seven of them seven different sizes you can print this off and you can cut these out and you can use these templates in your projects as well so I'll put the link for that in the description below this video so I'm going to work my project today in a frame I've got a piece of the plain cotton fabric some calico fabric on some stretcher bars I've just stretched them nice and tight and I'm holding them in a versatile table clamp so I've got both hands free you can work this in a slow stitch method if you want to as well and we will look at that a little bit later down the line and I'll show you one of that um, something that we've made with that so just a couple of different ways that you can work it and I selected a couple of pieces of fabric and some materials for my project already so I kind of picked a colour theme you don't have to go pink <laughs> you don't want to go pink I've got purple and gold here you can go red up here you can do a completely different colour I'm just going to show you the principle of how we make this heart so I selected a few different materials that go together I've got some nice gold ones a little bit of ribbon I've got some sequins as well and a couple of beads as well so you can put whatever you want to on this and I'm going to use quite a few different techniques which we have videos on all of them so when I get to a technique and got a video on it I will let you know and you'll be able to see that video up in the corner here so I'm going to use template number six which is the second from the largest one um, and I've actually printed this on cardboard it makes it a little bit easier to draw around if it's a little bit stiffer but you could always um, do them on a back of a cereals packet or something like that if you wanted if you haven't got any cardboard to print it on you can just trace around it and cut that out so I'm using this one here and I've just placed it in the middle of my fabric now I'm just using a plain calico because I'm going to put some layers on top of that um, you can start with a pattern fabric if you want to and incorporate that into your design um, so you can use either either way you can go for plain or you can go for patterned whatever you have in your stash don't go get something especially have a route round and see what you've got and I'm going to draw around that heart on the fabric I've got a water soluble water erasable pen you can use just a normal black drawing pen if you want um because we're going to stitch over this and we can cut it out as well if we want to so we won't see this so i'm just going to draw around my pattern piece like so so i've got that marked i can take that pin out now because that was just marking the position of it so what i'm going to do is going to layer up some fabrics in a heart shape and i'm going to stitch those down and then i'm going to do some techniques on top of that so we're kind of doing a slow stitch sort of method where we layer the fabrics so if you don't want to do this in a frame you can do this in your hand um, and we're also going to look at some sort of applique methods as well which we do have a video on so let's just bring this one back in at this point just so you can see what i'm going to do so there is my heart shape that i've just drawn around this is the same size as the one i'm going to show you and i've layered up these fabrics in different sort of patches and we just applique them down and um, put some lace in there and then I've decorated it on top after that so I'm going to do a version of that it's not going to be exactly the same but I'm going to use the same fabrics so what I've started with is I've drawn myself a heart so again I've just drawn around that template on a different piece of fabric but a nice piece of background fabric and then I'm going to just cut that out so again you can use your water erasable pen or your normal drawing pen if you want and I'm just going to cut around that and then I can just place that in position now you can just have a little bit of fun playing now with what order goes on next there's no right or wrong to this just enjoy playing and layering your fabrics um, and I'm going to sort of use both different colors on either side I'm not just going to do a heart like that and, and stitch on it you can do that if you want and make your embroidery the highlight but I'm going to bring some other fabrics in here this is quite an interesting silk this is silk dupion but it's been woven with two different colors so the warp and the weft thread are different colours and you get this sort of shine in it which is really great I really like this edge actually so I think I might do half of it in that colour so I'm going to bring my template back in and I'm going to draw around that half and I'm going to cut that half of the heart out that fits on there like that really liking that so I've also got gold fabric which looks quite nice you can see through this so you can see those layers underneath or we could put a little bit of lace on there I've got this lace sort of fabric which is 
quite nice quite like that don't worry about the shape of it at the minute you can cut it to shape afterwards just sort of play a bit with the layers and that's nice I like that little flower up in that corner there I think we might do that let's cut down the middle We could just put that over the top of that. Everything doesn't have to be a perfect heart shape. <laughs> you can layer it up and hide the ends underneath. I'm not worrying about that. We'll cut that off in a minute. And then if you start to get something you like, you could just put some pins in place just to hold it. So these are some applique methods. So that's applying a fabric to another fabric and using a stitch to hold it down. We have a video on that. It's going to appear up in this corner. If you want to see some of those techniques, we've got a fun little ginger cat project <laughs> to show you some different techniques on. So that's all I'm really doing here. Just applying some different fabrics on top of each other and we'll use some stitches to hold them down. I've also got a little bit of pattern fabric that's nice. I might cut this little motif out actually put that in the middle I think that would be fun and I've got a little bit of braid as well that braid would look amazing up the middle of there let's put that there not worrying about that we'll tidy that up in a moment that's quite nice um, and then we'll put a little bit of gold somewhere maybe we'll put that underneath the net to show through there so I'm not going to go crazy with the things I'm putting up now because we have got to put some stitches and some beads and some sequins on as well to make it really nice so I'm just going to fiddle that with that a little bit more get something I'm happy with and then we'll look at how to get that sewn down okay so I've had a little bit of fiddle with that and <laughs> changed it around a little bit I've actually covered up that blue um, frayed edge it looked nice but it's going to be a bit of a problem to sew especially under the camera so I've covered it up with the braid I've cut that little um, motif out of the fabric really like that there and I've chosen my thread colours to go with that so we'll talk about that in a minute as well put a little bit of lace on it um, and then you can see how I've just held it down with these pins I've just sort of stuck them in from the top just to hold everything in place because there's quite a lot going on on there and I've left these little edges we won't worry about those at the moment because what I want to do is get that all in place now and um, so I can sew on it so I've got a piece of ordinary sewing cotton just a strong polyester sewing cotton got it in a different color to what I'm sewing because I'm going to take it out afterwards and I'm going to sew this down so I'm going to just put some big basting stitches tacking stitches in it to hold all of these places uh, these pieces in place so when I take the pins out nothing's going to move hopefully so you put as many tacking stitches in as you need to do it so I'm going to come up on that background fabric just doing this carefully so it doesn't move and don't worry about the size of your stitches just put in what you need to hold it down so I'm going to come up into here you could put a big one around the outside if you like go down into that lace to hold that I can take the pins out when I get to them so I'm not fighting with them up in the lace down into the silk so just using a small needle for this I've just got this fine thread in so I don't need a big needle for this I'm just going to go all the way around and hold that big piece of purple silk in place And then I'll just show you what to do about this bit in the middle. So I've got lots of things to hold down here. So I've got that braid in the middle. So I'm just going to stab down into that. Let's take that green pin out. And then up this side. So wherever you need to put the stitches, there's no method, right or wrong. I'm just going to hold it in place. I'm going to come up into there down into that braid again and I'm going to hold this bit of lace in as well so I'm going to come across here down into the lace so if you're not sure how many stitches to put in put more in there, more in than you think you need because you want it really secure as possible so just up in that lace 
and down into the pattern. So I'm just going to work my way around the whole shape like that, tacking everything down. I'll come down here and get that tacked down. Then I'll go around the bottom and around this shape and then up around this side um, and get all my pins out and get it all nice and secure. I've been around all my shape. I've got my pins out. Just got this last little bit to do, but I just wanted to show you another basting technique because it had come up on my Facebook page recently about basting and somebody didn't like taking the basting stitches out, wanted to put them in and leave them in. So you can do a permanent basting technique. I just thought I would show you that. So rather than having these big stitches that we take out afterwards, we're going to do tiny little stitches on the top so that you won't see them and they'll be covered up. So I'll show you that here. So I'm just going to come up inside that shape there. And instead of taking a big stitch across here like I've done over here, tiny little stitch up over a couple of threads straight back down again. And then I can jump on the back, not too far on the back because you get a long stitch on the back and then that could get caught. So straight up, straight back down, tiny little stitch. And if you use a colour that's close to the colours that you're using or a colour that will disappear, then you've got even less chance of seeing it. So you've just held down with these tiny little stitches and you can't see them. Up, straight back down, near, nearby, a couple of um, millimetres away at the most, I would say. Not even that, smaller than that. <laughs> Small as you can do. The smaller you can do it, the more visible it is. And that's invisible basting. And then you can just stitch over it and you don't need to leave those in. You do get long stitches on the back, which I'm not so much of a fan of, but it is another method that you can use if you don't want to have to take your basting stitches out later. So it's all tacked down, all basted down, nice and secure, not going anywhere. So let's just tidy these edges up. So I'm really just going to get my scissors and cut around the shape of that heart. Just snip those off. Save that for another project. Okay, so nice and neat and tidy. All looks like a heart, looking beautiful already. So let's add some stitching. So I'm going to use the DMC Etoile threads for this project. I thought a nice sparkly thread for a nice sparkly Heart, and I've actually matched them, as I mentioned earlier, to the colours that are in this little piece of fabric here. If you haven't seen my video on how to easily choose a colour scheme, <laughs> go and check that one out because this is part of that video and I've just picked this bit of fabric and I'm going to choose the colours that are in it. I've got a darker purple, so something that shows up. Um, that little bit of blue is in there. I've got a couple of pinks. Put bright pink in. It's not really in there specifically, but I thought I might just give it a bit of a pop. So the blue, um, the pale purple and the blue and then a little bit of a gold colour and that gives me this really beautiful colour scheme just with that added for a little a bit of extra zing if I want it I might not use that so I'm going to start with the purple I've got three strands in here uh, no right or wrong with the strands you do have as many you want to if you're not sure about how to do that there's a video on that too how to choose a number of strands and sample and just try things out and see what you like I'm going to use three so that you can see it under the camera and I'm just going to start to stitch this down. So this is one of the applique methods and it's just to do a stitch on the top. So we leave the edge raw and we're just going to do this little stitch on the top. So I'm just going to do a running stitch. So if you've done slow stitching with me, you will have seen this lots of times, lots of running stitch, really nice, easy stitch, but it is lovely in something like this. So we're making the stitch, the decorative stitch. You can see it, so we're going to make it look nice and pretty. I've done that really nice contrasting colour. I'm not going right to the edge of my heart and I'll explain why later. So just come in from the edge a bit, ignoring those basting stitches. We'll just stitch straight over the top of those, just working around the edge. And this is going to sew all of those layers together. So you can choose whatever stitches you like. If you've got a lot of stitch knowledge and loads of stitches, then you can work whatever you want to on this. I'm going to work a few different stitches, a couple of different techniques, and then we'll see what it all looks like. So just while I'm stitching this, I do just want to say a thank you to those of you who clicked the super thanks, thanks button recently, because you're enjoying the videos, click the little button below and donated. Thank you very much for your support and to our patrons and channel members as well. And um, they had a, an image earlier in the week of the fabrics and been guessing what they thought this video might be. So um, thank you to you for your support as well. It's very much appreciated. If you want to join um, either our channel members or our patrons, you can check out the description below this video and there's information on how you can do that and how you can join in. 
Okay, I'm going to stop there halfway. I quite like asymmetrical things. I'm going to do a different colour around the other side. But if you want symmetry, you can carry on all the way around. It's your piece, you do whatever you want. And to finish it off, I'm just going to come up right on the edge and do a couple of small stitches almost underneath that fabric there. You can turn your frame over and weave it under some stitches on the back if you want, but that saves me having to move the frame out of the way. Cut that off. We've got our first bit of stitching, so let's pick another colour and another stitch and we'll have a work on another area. So I've picked a nice blue colour, the blue from this little pattern here, and I'm going to do it in this area over here. If you've got a plain bit, it's quite nice just to dot some stitches in. You don't want to cover it all necessarily, but just a few little stitches here and there. I'm just going to come up in this shape and do some seeding. So we have a video with five different seeding stitches that you can try. So we're doing a stitch sample and we're trying some different stitches out. So if you're not um, sure what stitch you want to use or you don't have lots of different stitch knowledge, do check that stitch sampler project out because we're just doing some very simple ones to begin with and we're just going to build on that with some different stitches. And these two stitches that I've done so far are in that stitch sampler and you can just see how to use them and how to work them. So I'm just using simple stitches, they don't have to be complicated, just by laying them and putting them together you can make really beautiful embroideries. So they're just little straight stitches, just scattering them around like seeds have been dropped on the floor. I'm just going to fill that whole shape in with these stitches. So you have a little think when you're stitching about what happens when those basting stitches come out because they're holding everything at the minute but we're going to cut them out unless you've done the permanent basting. So I'm just going to use these stitches just to start to catch in that little bit of lace at the top there. You can see it move actually. So I'm just going to use those to start catching that down so when those stitches come out you really want everything to be held securely. So I've just got that in mind when I do my stitching. I'm just going to go into the top so I think I'll do something different for the white bit and again finish it off on the edge. So that's a really nice stitch just for putting a little bit of detail, a little bit of stitching detail on without covering up that beautiful fabric underneath. Okay so I'm going to put a different technique in now which goes really well with this and I'm going to do some silk ribbon roses. We've done these lots of times in other videos um, but I'll show you one here. You can see it in our flowers video, 10 different flowers. But it's a really nice one to add a little bit of dimension and to play with silk ribbons because they're really beautiful. So I'm going to do a little group of them. I'll do three, but I'll just show you the one first. And then I'm going to make a little uh, set of spokes that we're going to weave the ribbon around. So I'm just using two strands of a stranded cotton now in a similar colour to the ribbon that I'm going to use. And I'm going to put in those spokes. I've done a little Y shape, like so, it's a bit upside down. And then I'm going to put a stitch between the wider ones there. So we get five spokes basically. You need an odd number of spokes, that's quite important. Because we're going to weave it and if we have an even number we can't weave. So there's my little set of spokes there. I'll bring that thread up out of the way. choose my ribbon. So I've got some beautiful um, variegated ribbon here. This is a silk ribbon. You really need a silk. This question came up recently as well as can you use satin. Satin ribbon's a little bit stiff. You need something that's more supple and this silk ribbon is really lovely um, for that. And this is a four mil one. I've got a chenille needle for this. It's got a long eye on it to take the ribbon. That's quite important because we don't want to squash the ribbon. thread that in the needle and then just to secure it to the needle I poke the needle in the very end of it and then we pull the long end and it just hooks it on and makes it nice and secure so that doesn't fall off. I'm going to leave a long piece of ribbon so I can 
finish that off later on the back so I've just put a knot in the end of it you can weave it underneath if you want to but I'm going to just do that out of the way and then I can come up and do my ribbon <laughs> ribbon raise woven wheel <laughs> woven wheel ribbon raise I can't speak so I'm going to come up through the middle So come up near the center of the spoke and then I'm going to weave over and under these. So I'm going to go over the first one, under the second one. If you find the point of the needle is picking up on the fabric, then you can either use the eye of the needle and put that in through, or you could put it in a tapestry needle. That would work. I'm just going to go over and under each one all the way around and they make just beautiful little roses. So I shall do that now and then I'll show you how to finish that off. So keep going as far as you can. You might just have to move the ribbon out of the way just to see that spoke, but just get in as many times around as you can and make a really nice, beautiful rose with lots of petals. Don't pull it too tight because it'll all shrivel up. <laughs> it'll be just in bloom, so I'm just moving that out of the way there, underneath. See how it makes that beautiful petal effect, really nice. I think we can get one more in there. If you want to add a few extra petals, you can just put some separate stitches on the outside. You just caught the ribbon a little bit that side there, so it's gone a little bit awry, but rather than take it out and do it again, I'm just going to add some extra petals over the top. So I'm not going over and under those bars now, I'm just going little stitches around the edge. So I'm going to come out there with the needle, go around over the top and back in. It just sort of adds some on the outside and I'll just cover that a little bit up there. Just one more over here. When you're going through lots of layers like this it can catch so it's just something to be aware of. Running over the top there. That's just going to hold that down nicely. So you can <laughs> keep going, put as many petals on as you want. I am going to stop now, this is the last bit. I just keep thinking, oh, it just needs one more. There we go, sorted really nice. So don't pull too tightly on that. So nice of lots of nice, beautiful petals in your rose. And then to finish that ribbon off, I'm going to turn it over on the back. I'm just going to weave the ribbon underneath some of the stitches. So a little group of roses always looks really nice. I'm going to do three, so I'll do one a little one there and a bigger one there. I've got some different colours. I've got some white to go with the lace in there as well and a slightly darker one too. So I'll make those three different colours in three different sizes. Um, but I just want to pop and show you the next thing um, and we're going to look at a little bit of beadwork. So we're going to use that pattern in this little bit of fabric to sort of inform where I put my beads now. I'm just going to decorate it. So I've got a couple of strands of purple cotton here. The DMC a twirl. You can use stranded, you can use silk, you can use anything you want to use, anything that you have. And I'm just going to put a little sequin right in the middle of there. So I found some little purple ones. And then I can put a little bead on top. Make sure that your needle goes through the bead before you start. You might need a quite a fine needle for that. And I miss the bead out and I go back down the hole of the sequin. And that thread, if I go down slowly, slowly, pulls the little bead onto the sequin and that holds it on top, that holds it in place. So that's quite a nice one to use. If you don't want the stitches to show, you just want the beads to show. And then I'm just going to put a few more beads around that. You can do whatever you like here. You could follow these shapes and you could put beads up there. I'm just going to make a little kind of flower of beads around. Or actually might go up the middle. Shall I go up the middle? No, I'm going to stick to my guns. Really nice to add some beads on. They really add a beautiful bit of dimension to it. I've got a whole video on lots of different ways to put beads down. Loads and loads of different ways. And a little project for you to have a go out and a free design as well. That one's up here. And just threading it onto the needle, sliding it to the bottom. Lay your thread down, 
and the needle goes down the other side of the bead. I believe those three there, I quite like them going up into that point. And then I'm going to use this thread because I've got the nice purple in just to do a little bit of the running stitch up around this shape. So just starting to add some stitches into here. So I'm really mixing all these techniques and all these stitches, a little bit of beading, a little bit of silk ribbon. It's really lovely to mix them, especially on a project like this. Down the other side. And I can continue around this shape, I might go around these shapes in this purple as well, and just put some beads on in the centres here and just decorate that whole thing with beads and sequins. So I finished off my stitching using those techniques I've shown you. So let's have a little look and see what we've done here. So we've got some cross stitches in the lace, little gold cross stitches holding that lace down, the seeding in the top, which you saw me do. And we've got a back stitch down the side here to hold this nice silk, uh, purple silk on. We've got a little back stitch around these shapes here to hold this little pattern piece of fabric. And we put some beads in there as well, a little sequin there and then just moving across I've got some beads down the center of the braid to hold that in place and I have done some running stitch on either side just to make that sure that's nice and secure. We've got our little ribbon roses and I found some little sequins that looked a bit like leaves. <laughs> they weren't quite the right colour but they were close enough. I thought they were quite nice so I put those on as well. I went a little bit mad with the sequins, a little flower and a bead up there and a nice row of the gold beads around the edge of this running stitch there just to finish off that side. So let's talk about what you can do with this now that you have stitched it. So this one was stitched on the calico background because the idea is that we cut this out because I'm going to show you what you can make with this. But when I stitched my little sampler one, this one here, I thought it was quite nice <laughs> as it was. So um, I stitched it on a pink fabric background intending to cut it out, but thought it was really nice. So I just put it in a pink frame that I just happened to find um, and just you can just mount it and frame it like that. It does look really beautiful like that but I want to show you what you can do with this if you cut it out. So I'm just going to clear this away now and show you a few um, different pieces I've got. So the first thing I want to show you is these. These are my little slow stitched lavender hangers. <laughs> really sweet. But um, you could turn it into one of these very easily. So this is just a different way of putting them together. So that one I have put a backing linen on it and I've just done it so that edge is nice and frayed there and I've just done a back stitch all the way around the two pieces. You can kind of go around three quarters of it, leave a little gap there, you can put some wadding inside it and then you can just pin it shut and finish off that stitching. So that will give you a nice raw edge on it. If you don't like raw edges you can turn them in. So this one I've put them back the two right sides together so when you cut it out on the frame you leave a seam allowance all the way around it you cut another piece the same size with that seam allowance, you put the wrong, the right sides together and you sew around them right to the edge of the heart and then you can turn it inside out. Obviously be careful if you've got sequins and things like that on it when you turn it inside out and then you can stuff it and then you can just slip stitch the seam together there and you can put a little hanger on top. So little lavender bags would look really cute. You can make it into a greetings card. I've done a little diddy tiny one here and I've done this one on a piece of felt. Felt's really lovely to stitch on. I love using felt but I put the silk and the lace on top and the sequins as I've done before and then just applied it afterwards on a little gold background and done a running stitch around it on a piece of calico and that can go on a little card backing like that and I do have a whole video on making slow stitch greeting cards. You might have seen that one before if you've seen that video so do check that if you want to know how to make these ones a slightly different or uh, way of doing it there so they make great little greetings cards and if you want to do this in a slow stitch kind of method you could use the different sizes of templates you've got and cut yourself some different shape parts you could layer them up so there's a felt one underneath there's a little sort of silk one on top and another felt one there and then you could just stitch around that and stitch the layers together and you've got something really tactile and you can just do that in your hand you don't need to use the frame and have all the equipment it's really easy just to make these in your hand just need a little bit of thread and a few small pieces of fabric um, to do a little slow stitch one and then again that can go on your card backing or 
you could make a little brooch out of it. <laughs> this was so sweet. This one's I made a long time ago. So those are those silk ribbon roses that we looked at. Got some slightly different silk ribbon techniques. You can check out our videos on silk ribbon embroidery. Lots of different stitches in there. Um, and then I've just done that on a piece of felt and there's a felt backing on there. And I'm going to show you how to do this edge um, coming right up. So how to put these bees on and how to finish the edge. So if you don't want that raw edge, you want a nice neat edge um, and you're not turning it in and making the little lavender bag, this is another way you can finish that off. So we're going to show you that edging on this little slow stitch one I've made here. So I've done all this in my hand, but the method was exactly the same. I just didn't have it in a frame. I just cut my heart shape in and held it in my hand and stitched it. So there's that calico backing on it. I've layered up my fabrics and added some stitches and some sequins in. And I'm going to put this little felt backing and show you that edging. And this is really good as well. Show you this at the same time if you want to make some bunting up here we have a video on bunting over here that i did on the triangular one and um, but you could do it with any shape you like this is my little heart one it's not quite finished yet but um this is how you make that if you want to do that so you'll need these two layers my top layer and my backing layer and if you want to make the bunting you can just put your ribbon between those two layers and then when we stitch around it, that I'm going to show you now, you can just jump over that there and stitch around it and that will be held in place. And you can even move the hearts along if you want to. So just make sure you've got a ribbon nice and long enough. You've made your hearts and you can put your hearts on that way. So let me show you that edging now. I'm just pin the two pieces together just so they don't move. And I'm just going to use a double thread here. And we're going to work a blanket stitch around the outside. And I'm going to add a little bead on as well as I when I do it because that makes a really beautiful edge so I'm just going to have my thread come up just on that edge there in that underneath piece and then I'll just do one stitch to start it so down into that edge and we come up inside that loop there pull it slowly you can see what's happening and then because it's blanket stitch it leaves a little gap but if we thread on a little bead in between each one of those stitches bead that won't go on the needle and then you can take the needle down into that fabric again about the width of that bead you'll see what happens when I just pull this up tight You get that little bead edge, it's really beautiful. So just thread on another bead. Push it to the bottom of the thread. Take your needle straight down between both layers, the top layer and that backing felt layer. Just pull it up slowly, beautiful beaded edge. You could do every other bead, every other stitch if you wanted to. Mix the beads up. And that's just a nice way of tidying up that raw edge and making a really decorative edge. So I hope that video has inspired you. Loads of different techniques going on there. And lots of things you can put together to make a really beautiful piece of embroidery. Don't forget the free templates are on the free stuff page of my website. Link is in the description below. And if you've enjoyed this video, you might really like this video up here. Do pop over and have a look. Do give this video a thumbs up if you've had fun and you've enjoyed it. And I'll see you next time.